Kennedy Professor at the Eastern Kentucky University, and he's very well known for his extensive isotope tracer studies of the fischer approach synthesis reaction, both at EKU and previously when he was uh, spending several years in Bert Davis's group uh, at the Center for Applied Energy Research. Uh, the title of this presentation is Deuterium Tracer Studies, Alkylate uh, Mechanism and Formation of Branched Hydrocarbons Using the fischer approach Synthesis. Please help me welcome uh, Professor Xi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, today I'm talking about the European Tracer Study. And some I did in Dr. Davis' group, and some at the EKU. And, I talk, and then talk about the mechanism for uh, cobalt catalyzed uh, theotrope reaction. And uh, first, I will talk about some uh, deuterium uh, separation on the GC and the GCMS, and then talk about uh, what I, I did and what we did at the ETA year in 1990 and uh, 2000, and then talk about the other right? Okay, the story begins on the separation of isotope molecules on the GC. So that is in 1990 uh, when I was a postdoc. I was assigned to study mechanism of uh, 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 reaction of a very simple molecule to butanol. We <coughs> study the mechanism. We use the deuterium and, and the unbutanol compound and, uh, to study the competition of the burning. Well, I thought that this will, this will be easy. Okay, dehydration gives you three um, product and it will be three peak, and it will come out in less than five minutes on the GC. We expect some very little uh, a either, and that's the body one with the one peak. But to our surprise, that this is so called a small peak, a wine peak, we've got a five. A very small mind, we don't know what it is. It always come out of five peaks, and in, 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 in things like that. And then we finally, and at that time, we don't have GCMS, so we have to collect a sample to run in the type of research center. Okay, and finally, we find there each one. There is a their isomer can be separate. That's not a surprise. One surprise thing is that the deuterium the compound comes first. Okay, all of them. And the undeuterium one comes later. Now, and then we, f we, we, we find out from which one, uh, which one is which. Okay, so then we, we find something. I indeed check the chemical extract. You know at that time there is no uh, internet. Uh, we have to check uh, everyone. We didn't find the reference uh, in that part. I write a paper and I, I write a sentence such as uh, to the best of knowledge. This is the first. Okay. I talked to uh, Dr. Davis and I said, oh, wait a moment, wait, when, when you write this sentence, you have to make sure. And uh, he picked up the phone, called uh, his friend at the University of Tennessee. And uh, it is to our surprise, and uh, he finds this kind of phenomena many years ago. So it's not new. You know, at that time, uh, there is no internet. And uh, also, I was young at that time. There is no very hair at that time. <laughs> so, and, uh, but I. Uh, uh, with the encouragement of uh, Professor Van Hook, we indeed did some something like that. And uh, actually, the five peak is not a five; it is supposed to be ten. 
because there is an inertia number for each one, this is uh, uh, either. And uh, we manage to kind of connect the two different uh, uh, columns together, and total is the kind of 20 meter long, and we uh, separate 9 of 10. Okay. And uh, this work was published in, uh, we published several papers in the uh, Journal of Chromatography uh, in this area. So this is, uh, we call it, uh, the inverse isotope effect on GC column. Now, and uh, uh, Shufeko Niels uh, read that paper on the Afghans who write uh, application notes. We write this, and in return, they give us a several uh, column for free. Uh, we indeed uh, uh, publish some paper based on this method, because we know which will come out, and uh, for the either formation and uh, dehydration, which you keep using at that time. Now, this part is easy. The difficult part how to quantitatively analyze isotopic isomer, just one deuterium, uh, just one isotope uh, different. For example, we have a mixture of deuterium of one arcane. It could be C8, D16, or D15, D14, all of this. How to quantify each isotopic isomer? Now, at the same time, we have we do have a new uh, GCMS. So, if you follow this one peak, if just uh, in the on the left, you will find that the measure is the uh, T uh, sixteen. Okay, and uh, that is the, that the uh, the compound come come to first. If we uh, make a measurement on the right, and then we will give you a hydrogen containing compound. And if in the middle, well, the ratio is totally different. If you make conclusion based on each one of them, and certainly you are going to get the wrong uh, conclusion, the wrong answer. So what we should do is that we mean, uh, measure all of this. So this is for that peak, you have uh, uh, H4, H3, H2, and H, and also uh, H0. So, and uh, if you use uh, molecular ion to analyze all of this, so then certainly that will be, uh, give you correct uh, analysis of this mixture. But then this uh, result is not uh, published, and uh, we indeed tried to publish this, but uh, the referee said, uh, well, that's a kind of a routine work, but uh, we, we keep this for ourselves. <laughs> now, since we know this, we want to, we want to uh, do some uh, research in the real philosophical area. And uh, you know, in 1980, started from 1970, 1980 and uh, 2000, there is a challenge to uh, ASF equation. So according to the ASF equation, if you have a plot, you support to predict, but uh, almost no proof get uh, this kind of distribution. Instead, and then you get a thing like this. Okay. That means that there is a positive or negative deviation from ASF equation. How to explain this kind of thing? Now, you find that in literature, it's not only that. There is a, a positive and negative deviation from the ASF equation. Also, there is a, a, the alpha value change with the bad, bad resting time, or PO ratio. And the most importantly, we did a carbon 14 trigger study, a uh, carbon 14 study. And uh, there is a negative deviation for a constant activity. For example, if the compound is an uh, uh, initiator, the molar activity is supposed to be constant. But uh, instead, yes, it's constant, just uh, like uh, Amy said. 
lead from C2 to C8 or C7. That's a constant. But after that, that is a decrease with the molecular weight increase. So how to explain this? There are a lot of uh, scientists make a contribution in this area. For example, and uh, Professor Sanford in MIT proposed that two different uh, candidates to get side uh, theory. And then uh, Professor Iglesias proposed the diffusion imitation model. And also, there's uh, some other theories explaining this. But if you put uh, all of this together, none of them can explain all of this. So this means something we still don't understand. Now, and then, at that time, I, we run a uh, carbon-14 uh, tracer for something. And uh, I uh, was uh, responsible for, I mean, cleaning up all of this uh, carbon-14 stuff. Okay. And a uh, report because of the uh, regulation. Now, for each one, the first day when we run this, the carbon-14, I just can cover about 70%. So where is the other almost 30% of carbon-14? So therefore, I have to pick up the next day. And the next day, I got about 20%, and even 60 days later, we still got a lot significant of uh, carbon-14 material. Now, what does this mean? This means that there is a radioactive compound accumulate in the reactor. So, we cannot uh, get, we think we brought the carbon 14, we stopped, we collect all the uh, sample, but actually there are significant amount of steel in the reactor. Now, for carbon 14, we cannot uh, determine each one, but uh, we can do this, use uh, uh, use QQM, because we can use the GCMS to analyze each one. So what we did is we run the CO hydrogen first, and then switch the two CO and the QQM. Okay, if there is no accumulation, and then the product is supposed to be, all of them, a the compound. Okay, and then we, indeed, that is the case for arctin. If you run arctin, just a small amount of uh, uh, so, yeah. uh, just a small amount of uh, hydrogen containing compound, and uh, mainly it's a deuterium one. Okay, that's okay, but uh, for C10, dating, okay, the accumulated product almost equal to the new one. If you have a six, uh, uh, C60, and uh, mainly what we collected is mainly it's a hydrogen containing column. It's a accumulated one. Okay. Now, we need uh, all of this uh, up to C18. If you uh, plot the percent of uh, accumulation, you see for C18, that's um, 98% of it. That is, uh, the first day you collected the entity, actually, this uh, uh, accumulated product, you didn't get any. I mean, just a small amount of fresh produced anti product. So, therefore, we propose, I mean, that uh, uh, the sample you collected, including two parts, one is a fresh, freshly produced anti product, and then is, uh, another part is the uh, uh, accumulated product. And then we can use the, uh, the equation to calculate each one. If we know uh, that for a particular reactor, the fraction of uh, accumulation. Now, this uh, result means that ASF equations here work. So we don't need to modify ASF equation. We don't need to, And we use this equation to explain all of this uh, chain length related phenomena. Okay. Now, for example, how to solve this problem? 
you can solve this problem by you need the, the alpha value for a, a reaction. And then you can just make a switch. We did that for a uh, catalyst. For example, from C, from C2 to C8, there is a, we plot there is a uh, alpha value. And then for the, from C, uh, C9 to C16, there is another alpha value. And these two parallel to each other. So therefore, using this one can, uh, can uh, solve a little bit about this problem. So, and also there is another ch uh, challenge to the to the ASF equation, including uh, parallel to orphan ratio. And uh, Professor Ignacia explained it using transform the effect, explained this. And uh, what he explained is the result this. Okay. But uh, this one is not a true PO ratio of uh, heterotrophic reaction. The true one of the switch experiment is got in the red line. It's almost a constant. Yes, there is an increase, but it's just a little bit. Therefore, you don't need any theory to explain this. It's already there. Okay. That, uh, that, uh, that's uh, uh, also based on the uh, uh, experiment. And uh, we, uh, we published this in the today. Now, there is another challenge to the ASF equation. That is uh, from uh, Professor Imoto. He did uh, in supercritical conditioning, and uh, to run this, he find that there are a lot of mind that was uh, heavy product. He called uh, this the anti ASF distribution. We did a similar experiment, not the exact same, and uh, using carbon 14 tractor study. And we find that yes, there is an incorporation, but the incorporation obey the SF equation. So there is no anti-SF equation. Okay, so after this, and then I, we, uh, I left here, and then we continue to study in this area with the two. A uh, technique I have. One is the uh, uh, how to analyze the nuclear compound. Another one, we use uh, the uh, H2D2 switching method. What are we. Enrichment 
is a function of uh, carbon number. Now, for that one, how to explain it? So, what we explain it is, is this. First, you have to have uh, explain the inverse of the effect. So, in order to in, uh, explain this, and the, uh, there must have, in some, some step, there is a, a bound order change, or hybridization change, the structure from SP2 to SP3, or from SP to SP2. If you have this kind of change, then I could explain the inverse of the effect. Now, uh, based on this, and then we propose the uh, arterial mechanism. Arterial mechanism shows this right at the bottom, and then the chain, a growing chain, is uh, is the arterial, and then the monomer is a, a CH species. And then if you use this, and then you can uh, explain uh, what happens for the new term, uh, uh, for the, for the uh, inverse angle effect. Now, the inverse angle effect could be from other sources, such as uh, alpha gothic. Uh, or beta gothic uh, interaction. But uh, that will give you the same result. Now, when we propose this method, we made, made the following assumption that it's uh, FTS obey as a kinetic. That's our assumption. That means the FT products are controlled, uh, are kinetic control. So that uh, we can use this equation to uh, to indicate overall in arcuity. But a uh, three arcuity can give you protein. When protein is read out of stock, there's two possibility. One is give you one probability which will be grow, give you C4. But uh, if you even give you two probability, well, that will give you branch compound. That is the uh, two methyl. Uh, Branch the uh, yeah, branch the part of carbon and so on. So that's uh, for uh, copolymerase reaction. And then uh, I thank Dr. Davis and uh, his uh, work and uh, his support for many years, and also the members in his uh, uh, group. And uh, so for the uh, EKU for the financial support and uh, several of my students. Okay. Uh, thank you. All of you. Thank you very much. And we have um, maybe time for a couple of short, short questions. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. What type of column you use to separate uh, 50 50 when you do the 50 50 mixture of nitrogen between? What type of column you use to separate nitrogen from nitrogen? I use the uh, ITPV5. Uh, as a PB, oh, they are PB5. Is it a column to separate all the isotopomers? Yeah, and actually, according to, uh, according to Professor Bantu, any kind of a column can have uh, can separate, but uh, the separation is a very kind of a column. What he did in 1970, he used just a glass tube to separate some different compounds. Yeah. But in the case of IFT, you get a broad distribution. So uh, broadly, you mean, yes. Yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah, so that is that. Each isotopomers, I mean, the difficulty in separation of these. Separation, yeah. For, for that one, we, we use a 60 meter uh, SPD uh, column, and then we have to rely on uh, GCMS. GCMS. And then that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. For complete separation, uh, the, the, the difference, the difference at least is three. So, you, for example, you have uh, octane D0, and uh, then you can have a uh, uh, significant separation that will be this uh, octane D3. You have to, if uh, cannot separate R, uh, D0 and D1. Okay. Uh, but uh, you can see on the, uh, on the GCMS, uh, there's a peak, uh, there's a shoulder, but I cannot completely separate. So you showed in one of the slides like uh, 
for using the 120 meter uh, column that you can supply the octane isotopomers of octane. Uh, so is that column can be used to supply the HD uh, isotopomers? Uh, you mean 20 column? 20, 20 meter, meter column. length column you use and you got yeah, to yeah. separate it phase. Yeah, probably. So that column can be used for separating the FDI isotopomers? Uh, Mm, no, probably not. <laughs> probably <laughs> not. So I do try the 30 meter, 30 meter now. Uh, but uh, if you you if you have a type of mass uh, detector, uh, then you can you can you can find it. Uh, you, you can see it. Uh, totally. Well, start here and then over there. Yeah. Thanks for a very nice presentation. Okay. And I was uh, thinking about the magnetism we showed. Yeah. And since yesterday I've been presenting about stable C2, C3 species on the surface. Uh -huh. And some of the species that you include in your magnetism are not particularly stable. Uh, I was wondering if you can make it match or, or have a similar magnetism but using more stable species. Uh, uh, yeah, that is, that is the thing. Yeah. Or, or maybe. Uh, do you have any information about stability of the? Uh, yeah, the uh, actually, that's a very good question. Actually, I, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know which uh, species is the more, is the more stable. Uh, but I just think that I mean, they have to go to go together. I think uh, that our theory probably is uh, uh, we can consider that as the intermediate. So probably we could have find some way to. I mean to uh, to determine our period, the green chain, and uh, that was that could be a, a step of this. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> not the most at all. Yeah, can draw the diagram at least on the close spectrum. Uh, yeah, the right. is not so the actually yeah. dying would be more stable. Uh, dying? No. Uh, dying. So uh, oh, okay, dying. C R. <laughs> okay. Uh, like the C H. Okay, Pro probably they go through through this, but uh, uh, that is that is uh, that possibility is not uh, necessarily produced in inverse actor. <coughs> uh, probably they go through our period and uh, then go through some stable species, and uh, then go to another coming coming formation. Probably that's uh, uh, Professor Weinstein. They did some calculation using uh, reaction. And then probably that 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 is what it is. Well, you can talk. Okay. I think we'll be quiet if you come yeah. to the coffee break. Yeah. And one more question. Okay. So with the with the oil field ratio, okay. The carbon number dependence there. Yeah. 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 It turns out that the oil field that's a secondary reaction involved to a high extent with the cobalt catalyst. Yeah. yeah. And so this explains much how the uh, all of the paraffin ratio changes. It's a secondary reaction. These are no longer the primary products. Yeah. This may be different with the iron catalyst. <coughs> For instance, the Iglesia picture, they yeah. are only primary oil of things. Yeah? It doesn't have in it so much the reabsorption of oil of things on other sides. Yeah? Yeah. So there's some confusion in the literature. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's that what we, right now, we are conducting the uh, inverse side of the effect. And, uh, Geothermic enrichment in iron catalyzed reaction. We, we do find what you, you, you said. For the paraffin orphan ratio, when there's something uh, very, very strange. And uh, actually, the uh, two orphan increase, okay, one orphan decrease. So clearly, there is a secondary reaction. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the presentation. For the discussion.